Hi, uh, I'm Rich Curtis. I'm going to be talking about um, a project that I've been working on for event management using Drupal um, with Drupal Commerce. Um, so uh, my name is Rich Curtis. I'm a lead developer at Unleash Technologies. Um, I do mostly Drupal uh, backend work as well as Symfony um, app development as well. Um, so here's my contact info and uh, Unleash's website um, and our profile on Drupal.org. Um, so I'm going to talk about a couple things. The primary thing is, you know, how how we're trying to move towards doing event registration in Drupal. Um, you know, part of that is what the ecosystem currently provides, um, as well as what we're trying to move to and, and trying to develop, so that we can have a more consistent experience and make our development um, of, of sites that use event registration easier. Um, and I'm hopefully going to demo, um, as long as it works, uh, some of the functionality that we've been working on. Um, and you know, talk about what's going on. Uh, so, the first thing is the context for for the project and, and how we're approaching this. Is we work very closely with a lot of associations and nonprofits, um, often organizations that run events. Um, that's trainings, conferences, um, and and with those events, they often have people that come to those events. And and if they have membership access on their website, authenticated users that are their members or constituents, you want to be able to register those users alongside every, I think, else on the website. So if they're purchasing you know, a t-shirt, they might also want to purchase an event ticket um, at the same time. So developing a system that works well, and, and we've done this for a couple of clients, but every time it's been complicated, it's been heavy, um, you know, a lot to maintain, so we're trying to standardize on a simplistic way that you know the Drupal community can, can leverage um, and hope that through uh, contributed modules, actually, um, which we'll talk about shortly. So our, our goals were very different types of events, um, including e-commerce for registration and tickets, being able to support both paid events and free events, um, different types of attendees, sometimes you have you know, speakers, staff that are operating the event, event sponsors, tracking all of those people, um, you know, their, their costs might be different for the event. Um, some of them might register via the website, some might be added by via staff uh, through the back end. But being able to keep all the information tracked and consistent with the website and potentially um, you know, going down the avenue of giving and granting access to content within the website, um, letting speakers update their pages, um, you know, giving them access to additional event resources um, for attendees and things like that so that you can track information. Um, and then ultimately, you know, both actual site users being able to register with their account. Um, you know, in the case of something like DrupalCon, we want to re register with our identity who we are in the Drupal community not just as an anonymous user, and keep that tr information track consistent. So there's a couple of options currently um, available um, within the Drupal community. And you know, none of them work well um, in Drupal 8. Um, the first option that is available for Drupal 8 is the events and registration module, um, the RNG um, module name um, on Drupal.org. And it does provide robust support for events and registrations, tracking attendees. Um, as well as features for communication, um, access restrictions for registration, as well as support for, for group registration and things. But one thing that's clearly lacking here is the, the commerce portion, actually being able to track and ticket your guests, um, you know, have them actually register for the event. Um, in one of our projects, we used this as the prototype or base layer for our implementation. And uh, you know, we had to do an extensive commerce you know, pairing in order to make everything work. Um, it also uses its own event entity, um, you know, which is great. But if you, you know, are approached your site already and built out content, um, you know, this is not necessarily the best approach. Uh, the second implementation is only for Drupal 7, unfortunately, but was the registration module, which let you register uh, for any sort of entity within the site. Uh, I guess the goal was sort of for events, but technically complete, you know, it was associated with general entities. Um, it had access control. It had, you know, waiting lists. Uh, if you know you fill up attendance, um, they work great with views, um, and it had two extensions that actually integrated it with Drupal Commerce. But this is in, it, or was never upgraded or migrated to Drupal 8. Um, so unfortunately, you know, for, for a Drupal 8 or Drupal 9 site, you know, this this isn't an option. Um, so approaching this, we wanted to build a good solution, and you know that meant taking a look at, at those sort of initial you know context points, um, and. One of the things that you know is important to me as a member of the Drupal community, maintainer of modules, is that Drupal is, as Dries said, um, the Dries note this year, for ambitious site builders. It's, it's about empowering our users of uh, the site 
and people that are non-technical as a developer, empowering non-technical users who can you know, point and click through the interface and build a complex experience without you know, coding. Um, and building that as a solution instead of just a problem to solve. And in the past, we had approached this problem and built custom code for you know, our, co our client and um, you know, solved their problem, but that code wasn't portable to you know, other sites and other projects very easily. Um, so, as I said, our use cases, um, you know, conferences such as DrupalCon or Drupal Camps such as this weekend, um, classes and training activities, there's potentially even a case for using it for, you know, a school that might want to do ticketing for concerts or performances, um, sports activities, and as I said, free and paid events, you know, certain, certain people run, um, you know, at DrupalCon I was talking with someone who works for a library and their events are all free and public. Being able to register for those without the requirement of commerce and that sort of checkout experience. Um, so as I said, it provide a robust uh, event registration system for Drupal, uh, support ticketing where, where possible with Drupal Commerce, since that already provides pricing, carts, collection of inf billing information along the checkout process, um, tracking different types of attendees, uh, you know, individual guests, which are speakers and attendees, um, groups and organizations that may be sponsors or, you know, if you're, you're running in a, a science fair, you know, you might have organizations demoing at the science fair or, you know, a, a trade show would have your companies registering, being able to register those organizations, um, you know, as a group as opposed to as an individual user. Um, and additionally, variable costs, tracking, you know, discounts and early registrations where possible. Um, and a lot of those are features of commerce and what commerce can do. Um, and then one of the, the you know, lofty goals is the ability to handle check-in, uh, reporting, communications with those members, you know, the attendees, through some sort of experience in Drupal, um, so that you don't have to necessarily ha pass that information off to an external system uh, and provide an integration there. So, <laughs> XKCD, um, always very fun. Um, this is one of my favorite comics when it comes to building new things, right? There's always solutions out there, ways that you can build things. Um, and you know, does adding a new solution you know, complicate the ecosystem? Of course it does. Um, for those of you um, who can't necessarily read the small text here, you know, it's, there are 14, 14 competing standards. 14, that's ridiculous. Let's develop one universal solution that covers all the use cases, and now there's 15. No one moved to the new standard, right? So how do you, you know, approach this? And hopefully building a robust solution that's flexible um, and can support as much workflow as possible and you know, works well uh, in Drupal 8 plus, you know, help, will help people move to a standard and make you know, our lives as developers um, and site builders easier. So we chose to build our project around the event module. Um, we chose this because it provides you know, an event entity um, as opposed to a node. Um, the advantage there of being able to have different types of events um, instead of having a node or multiple different node types where you track, this is a conference, this is a training, um, the event module has an event entity, allows, lets you react to you know, sort of the entity type as a whole, but also define those sub bundles, um, those subtypes uh, when needed, so you can have the additional information. The events model, module also provides groups integration. Um, this isn't for registration, but it provides the access to the groups, uh, so, or access to an event for a group, um, so you can make an event exclusive to a user group um, or a community um, within a website. And for anyone who's not super familiar with Drupal Commerce, Drupal Commerce provides a virtual storefront. Uh, it provides order and checkout process, um, you know, uh, pricing for items and products. You can actually purchase, you know, a physical item with the website. It handles ship or it tracks shipping, sales, packaging um, with, with community extensions. So we wanted to build on top of these two modules in order to make the best possible experience. So. We were initially thinking of one module and I broke it down into two projects. The first one is handling the event registration. Um, who's coming to the event, who's supporting the event, um, you know, who might be su you know, supplying resources, um, tracking all of that separately, um, you know, just a list of attendees, not caring about pricing or costs, and then a separate ticketing module to handle um, you know, the different tiers of ticketing, different pricing, um, orders and checkout because not everyone needs the full commerce ecosystem in order to do that basic you know, free event website, um, for, say for a nonprofit or that library. Um, so the event registration module um, provides, is, is a, a new project that I started on Drupal.org. Um, 
the event registration module provides entity types uh, for registrations as well as a bundle entity. Um, so you can define multiple different registration types. Uh, dynamic entity uh, references, which means that each different entity type can be associated, or each registration type can be associated with a different entity type. Um, that means you can define registrations for users, groups, nodes, whatever you have within your site, a uh, custom entity that you might have, and be able to link that to a registration during the, the registration process. Um, the check-in and attendance um, is something that I'm working towards as sort of the phase two of the module um, ability to, you know, for an event or someone running an event, instead of, you know, needing to print out a piece of paper and check off people, just be able to select them from a list and, you know, mark them as, as present. Um, and then uh, reporting with views. And then the idea with this is, again, to work without commerce, you know, provide free um, event registration uh, or, you know, link out to an external system if you need to handle payment. And the event ticket module, also um, a new module on Drupal.org. Um, this is what provides the commerce integration. So uh, it provides its own ticket uh, entity type um, and ticket type uh, entity. And those, the, the ticket entity type is purchasable, which means that once given to commerce, it can leverage the entire checkout and order process. Um, and it, the module also provides an additional checkout, or a checkout pane, which in Drupal Commerce is an additional step um, that you can complete during the checkout process. And this prompts the user to fill out you know, the actual registration details. Um, so who's coming, what their name is, their address, if you're collecting that. Um, and that is an entity, um, and that actually creates an entity within the event registration module to let you track that information um, sort of long term and be able to use the event registration module for potentially robust features of access control and other functionality. Um, and this, yeah, again, extends the, the event registrations module um, and generates the entities during checkout and also associates those registrations with the ticket history so that you can, you know, when you're checking out or if you're running a report, you can see, you know, when someone purchased a ticket, um, you know, make sure that that transaction is, is tracked completely. Um, so I'm going to switch real quick to uh, my web browser here to show a brief demo. Um, Switch back to the, um, so this is a very simple site. Um, it's installed via a set of configuration um, that we use, um, or that we're developing on Unleashed sort of to, to make consistent sites, but the bare bones, just some standard modules. On top of that, I've installed the event, the two event, new event modules, as well as the event module itself, um, the entire commerce checkout process, and then uh, the groups module in order to demonstrate some features. So. Um, the, the couple new sections, um, the events module provides an option here to actually define events, and I've defined an event and called it uh, Drupal Asheville and made a spelling mistake, so I'm going to go fix that. Because, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know, recording. Um, <laughs> but it's an entity, it's a fieldable entity. You can, on an event, assign as many fields that you would like. Um, and all of that good stuff um, that we're familiar with. Um, and then um, to demonstrate, you can define event types. And in the site, I've defined three of them, um, you know, commerce or a conference, a training, um, and then defined a couple of registration types for attendees, individual sponsors, sponsors, um, you know, event staff, and volunteers. Um, so if we switch over to this event, um, this event provides a couple of new interfaces. Um, they're up here in tabs as well as their own URLs. So the first thing that you'll notice is um, down here in the body of the page is sort of a form. Uh, the module's early in development, um, so this form, I intend to improve this form and the accessibility and usability of it, but the idea here is it's a checkout form, so you could enter your quantity of a given ticket. Um, so here, you know, um, we're looking to be an event sponsor, and uh, we only want one of those, no reason to spend, you know, sponsor twice. Uh, unless you want to spend uh, sponsor a specific amount of money. Um, and we're also, uh, as a company, you know, we want to send a couple of, of, volunteer, of attendees to the camp as well. Um, so we'll pay for general admission and we can add those to our cart. And I found this is a bug this morning. It does not redirect me to the cart, so I have to edit the URL. Um, so here you can see the shopping cart um, and those those items have been added to the shopping cart as well as my testing items from earlier today. Um, so we can quickly edit that um, those quantities. Um, 
we also were testing sponsoring lunch as well. Um, and during the checkout process, um, you'll see that it prompts up. And you know, there's there's still some UI work. Um, this is a very new module, something you know that I kind of need to work out the use cases with. But you'll see here that we can actually, you know, this is for our sponsorship, and you're actually able to select. You know, I've created two groups here. Um, you know, this is my company, and that's who I want to sponsor. Um, I think this field is required. Um, and then, you know, here's our general admission. So here's our first employee. So um, we say, you know, John Smith. I can't type. <laughs> I'm sorry about that one. Um, and then, you know, we can actually select a user entity to reference that to. Um, there's some adjustments that I hope to make on this. Um, the extra name field here, name field here, seems kind of redundant if you are selecting a user. Um, and some of these other properties, like the event, we already know you're registering. So. This is an entity form that's being embedded in the checkout process. So you can actually go into the configuration um, for the registration type, uh, say for an attendee, and we can actually manage uh, the form display here and m modify how this uh, is actually going to display during the checkout process to, you know, if we want to remove, say, uh, I guy have to check down here. Um, we can actually go here and modify the way the register form gets rendered and say, oh, we don't actually want to have the language um, or the event in this process. And if we go back to our checkout pane, um, you'll see that that's been updated um, so that that event item's removed. So this is very flexible, um, provides a lot of opportunity for a site builder to be able to come in here and change sort of the information about the registration type. Um, and once you complete checkout, this will actually populate. Um, I'm going to go back to my cart so I don't have to fill out the entire uh, form here. And we're going to decrease the number of items. Um, oh. Scrolling in text boxes makes the quantity go up if you weren't aware. <laughs> uh, we'll check out again. <laughs> It is definitely a feature. Um, and I didn't edit this entity form. So um, that different entity form, you'll notice this is a, apparently it's not telling me if it's checked or not. I'm hoping those are checked. Um, No, so now we can complete the actual registration process. Um, you can see our quantity. Um, this is selecting the billing information for our um, order checkout process. The, the key part here is if I go back to that event page, um, what you'll actually see now if I go to the registrations list here is that we've now defined those, um, you know, the event sponsorship and as well as the registration here um, in this page. So. You're able to actually look at a holistic view of who's coming to my event. You know, what have they, you know, set up? Uh, what have they paid for, for example? Um, and and this and this page is actually powered by views. There's a bug here where I have to re-add the tabs to this page. But the idea is you have the flexibility to modify as much of this as possible um, in order to provide the you know most simplistic experience, customize that experience, and you know it's it's through Drupal's plugin system. So. If you wanted to change the way the registration form works, you know that's that's an option as well. Um, and if we go back to the event real quick, um, the last piece to show is actually that you know there's a separate order page here, um, you know, for actually checking, you know, separate order page from the main page. It's embedded in the main page using uh, the field, an extra field, um, which to Drupal is sort of just you know, it's not actually a field, but it's exposed to the view system. Um, but it also means that it's exposed as a block in something like Layout Builder, so you can actually move and you know, relocate that section of the form. Um, so you can order tickets here um, and summarize the tickets that are available. So in this case, I defined three different statuses, but we can actually say add another um, different tier of either sponsorship or attendees uh, if, if you can want to do so. And um, on the register reg registrations list, I'm um, sorry, on the register page, um, you get a similar interface. So um, 
this page has some work to be done here um, to, to enhance the display and make it a little more clear. But the idea here is to be able to register as you know, a different type of person. So in this case, if we want to volunteer for the event, you know, we can click register as a volunteer and we get a form um, that can collect the information. You know, what, what are you interested in doing as a volunteer? How do you want to help? Who are you? you know, what's, what's your contact information? Um, you know, what days are you available? Whatever we want to collect about our volunteer collect that information here and then be able to manage that information, you know, down the line, you know, export that into something else, send that to a mailing list, um, you know, being able to communicate with people is, is sort of the goal here. And doing it within the Drupal website where if you're already tracking and presenting your events, um, and that's sort of where your site admins are providing that information, also, you know, keeping the users within the site because sending them out to another platform, whether it's Eventbrite or something else, you know, it sends them out to the site they don't know to come back necessarily. Um, so keeping them with an experience and, and finishing out that process within Drupal is, is great if, if that's something you're capable of doing. Um, okay, uh, and now we're just gonna switch back. Oh, the last part I wanted to show was that um, underneath the registration types, uh, each of the, the different types can be associated with the registrable entity. So this is any entity within Drupal is available here. Um, so, you know, you can actually register for groups, you know, you can register media entities, um, things like that. So if you, I don't know, submitting a film contest uh, and you uploaded your, your video, you could actually, you know, submit that um, as part of this process. Um, and this is, again, an entity form, uh, or will power as an entity form, so you can configure how that actually works within the upload form. And instead of being a registered entity here as being a drop down, this could be, you know, an inline entity form or something else, um, you know, in order to let the user upload that content at the same time. Uh, and then the same thing exists for the ticket types as well. Um, so the ticket types, if we take a look at, say, our general mission, we associate it with different registration types. So if when you create that sponsorship one, you can create it for an organization um, or, you know, whatever kind of content you're trying to, a registration you want to be defined as part of that checkout process. Okay, um, back to the presentation. Is that the... So uh, I guess the question is, right, what's the status of this? It's a, it's a new project that I've been working on. Um, so I actually made, you know, in, in anticipation of this event, a beta release last night um, <laughs> as I was working on my demo um, to make sure everything was working. There's a couple of bugs that I found while building the demo, so hopefully following up with, with a second release for both the modules. But, you know, this is something I've been working on recently. Um, it's brand new. So seeing how people might want to be able to use this will help drive the way it's being built um, and provide more flexibility um, to come. And you know, sort of the next thing on my list to work, figure out is actually that check-in process. So once someone's registered, how do you, you know, track their attendance and communication um, in the long term? And so the long-term roadmap um, is obviously that, that attendee management um, and check-in process. Um, Providing additional mechanics around the tickets, um, you know, being able to limit who can come to an event and how many people, um, either on a registration level or a ticket level, um, as well as tracking, uh, restricting those tickets. So, you know, not allowing someone to volunteer um, without being on a pre-selected list, for example. Um, you know, there's I've defined a bunch of permissions in order to make that possible, but there's a lot of code that has to be written to make the access control system work for that, um, and then access to resources, right? As we as attendees to the camp might get access to sponsor resources or, you know, the agenda for the event might not be published publicly, but once you sign in, you might get access to that information. Or if it's a virtual event on something like Zoom, the link to the, the actual uh, Zoom conference call and link, you know, you, you only want attendees to have access to that information. Um, so being able to control access to content, access to data within the site is sort of the power of Drupal. Um, and being able to link that reference through an event um, sort of you know makes that all that much easier. And you know, post those things, there's a couple of possible directions for this. You know, um, I envision some sort of summit uh, management. You know, in the case of sub events, right? DrupalCon has summits um, or trainings that go happen during the event. So being able to track those and registration for those is part of that same registration page. So when you select, you know. I want one main conference attendance and I want to attend, you know, the nonprofit summit or the, the government summit at DrupalCon um, or paying for a training the same way. Um, and then the, the event resources access, that's sort of key to making this all work. What's the value here? Um, and uh, courses and multi-day events, 
So in the concept of a training, right, you might pay for a course, uh, you know, for a class, and you meet every week on a Tuesday, and your teacher might want to track your attendance um, to each of those sessions. But being able to register you for those multiple events and link those registrations uh, sort of up front so you can make sure that person attends individual sessions. And then for a larger events, you know, seating, you know, sports events or, you know, concerts that may have assigned seating, being able to support that kind of functionality, uh, being able to track where, where someone is or what seats are reserved or paid for already, um, to sort of simplify that experience. Um, you know, I remember in high school going to, you know, the band concert or something, they sell tickets and it's, oh, that seat's picked and they drew it off on a piece of paper is marked. I can't imagine doing that for, you know, a nonprofit trying to keep track of seating that way. Um, so trying to figure out a system to, to manage that through Drupal. Um, there's a lot more infrastructure involved with that, but it's it's something that we could definitely do with the technology. And there's a couple of related modules. Two of these are actually ideas more so than modules. The places module um, is something that I found, and I think that that would be an awesome candidate for something like that you know, venue management kind of thing, building out around that, tracking seats, um, you know, spaces, rooms that you could possibly reserve. Um, and then um, being able to purchase those bundles in order to simplify the checkout experience for individuals who might be sponsoring, you know, making that one sum total instead of selecting two different things during the checkout process, or you know, being able to purchase a ticket and get a water bottle um, or something as a gift, um, sort of during the checkout process as well, um, as well as you know, sub event registrations. So that's sort of a module all by itself. I think that would not necessarily be event related, but also commerce, you know, cross commerce ecosystem, um, you know, mem membership to an organization, subscriptions, event registrations, all that kind of stuff. Um, and the second part of that is better API integrations. Um, you know, large organizations, they have CRMs, they, you know, I work with a lot of associations that have AMS products, association management systems, and being able to synchronize their event registrations to those systems is very critical. Um, so we've been working on a way to improve that sort of experience because Drupal doesn't have a great outflow, right? There's a feeds module, which is great for ingesting information, but we don't have a great way to publish or push out, um, you know, updates the Drupal content to other ecosystems. Um, and so that's you know basically all the information. Does anyone have any questions? No, I just threw a lot at you. Question. Yeah. Have you talked to the event organizing working group at all about these modules? Uh, very briefly. Um, so the question was, um, have I talked to the event? Uh, event organizing working group. Yes, <laughs> the event organizing working group um, for you know, DrupalCon and Drupal Camps. Um, I briefly talked with. I made a similar version of this presentation at Drupal Camp New Jersey, um, and Vaughn Eaton was there, and we, we chatted briefly about sort of what's happening with the Drupal, the events.drupal.org website. Um, and, you know, I think that project's already underway. Um, you know, I, I wanted to finish sort of the baseline functionality, um, and I, I do plan to reach out to Vaughn and be like, hey, you know, is there, you know, before that goes live, and then the plan for that is to go live um, following DrupalCon Europe, um, and, you know, before we go live with that for Pittsburgh, you know, is there a way to pivot that to sort of bring some of our ecosystem, our, our you know, contributed work into the, you know, our event space? Um, and I think if this module, um, there's a couple things that I'd like to see finished first before, and I don't, definitely don't want to disrupt the build of you know, the DrupalCon website, um, since they already have a timeline, but it might be, you know, viable to pivot to that. Um, and, I, and I know I've talked, I think I talked with you, April, briefly at DrupalCon and uh, some other people who are camp organizers, and they, you know, this is interesting to them as well. So I think there's definitely some opportunity to possibly, you know, use this inside of our community. Um, you know, I think the main challenge is that a lot of them rely on Open Collective for checkout. Um, so figuring out how to transition those those costs and offset those costs if you're using PayPal or whatever that process is might be a challenge. But um, once I think mod non module is finished, I definitely would like to talk to you know event organizers and help them you know simplify their their setup experience for sure. Yeah, I believe that the event organizers working group has an initiative right now where they're working on a toolkit or something like that. I don't know if you talked to Lean or Bobby. Um, well, so this is a group that meets monthly and they have a board of their own and I should be going to adult. And <laughs> and uh, and so they're trying to provide these tools and I think that would be a great place for you to share what you're doing and maybe even some feedback too and, 
and really interface with the camp level because the con does something completely different than the camp. Absolutely, yeah. 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 Well, and your camp websites are all pretty much individual. Um, each camp sort of does their own thing. And yeah, I think you know that's part of the challenge is you're doing your own thing and it's hard to maintain. So um, hopefully, you know, I, I definitely will reach out to them once sort of things are a little more solidified. Yes. Are you building this for client work through at least that was driving the development or what's driving you to build this? Um, the question was, is this something Unleashed is working on or is it, you know, what's the driving factor? Um, I am doing this by myself um, right now. Um, for the most part, it's the work that I'm doing. Um, it is motivated by a client project, by you know the fact that we have a number of clients that could leverage this technology. Um, unfortunately, I haven't been able to convince my boss to give me time to work on it because we're so busy, um, a lot of stuff to do. Um, so this is sort of something I've been doing on my free time. But I think now that I'm reaching, you know, sort of a feature, you know, minimal feature complete, minimum viable, minimum viable product state, I think we're definitely going to be, you know, leveraging this inside of some projects. Um, but you know, I think it's definitely something we're going to use at Unleashed, but it's not necessarily an Unleashed product. Okay. Can you tell us what the names of your modules were again? Okay, so my modules are event registration, which is event underscore registration on Drupal.org. I can actually go back. Um, so event registration, um, there's the URL um, on Drupal.org, um, and event tickets or event underscore ticket on Drupal.org. Thank you. Thank you for doing this. You're welcome. I think it will be very helpful for a lot of people. Yeah, I, I hope so because I know we we did use I mentioned RNG and the, you know comment was just that thanking me for working on it would be helpful. Um, so yeah, I think you know this is something that we've struggled with and we actually have a site that like we don't want to upgrade to Drupal nine or we've been holding off on the upgrade because the RNG module is not supported on Drupal nine yet. And like that's a hassle, but also we have so much custom code around that integration with Drupal Commerce and the way it's done. You know, it's it's going to be costly to make that switch because you know just because of how fragile that system is. And if if it was built on contrib modules that were you know designed to do exactly you know that commerce integration, I think it would be beneficial for us. Um, and so that's sort of where, where the motivation for this came out of. I'm um, just because the amount of custom code, you know, it's, it's un unsustainable for a small organization. Okay, thank you all for coming.